name is Julie Zazada. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I am from the Cedar Lake Historical Association. I'm the executive director out there. Hopefully you are all familiar with where it's at, uh, next to the Lighthouse Restaurant down in Cedar Lake. So welcome to our special edition of the 2020-2021 History Roadshow, which is actually a redo. Um, of what should have been happening in March of 2020. So this year we've been having a theme of Citizens of Cedar Lake. That's what we've been talking about for these programs that we meet for once a month down at the museum. But tonight we're not only going to be talking about Citizens of Cedar Lake, we're going to be talking about a location, the Lessons Resort, and the family that ran the resort down in Cedar Lake. That's where our museum is located. So tonight, I truly am on the road. I'm not actually at home at the museum. So thank you for the, the warm invitation from the ladies of Tri Kappa, Dyer, Cherville, St. John, Zeta Psi chapter okay excellent so tonight like i said is the second to last program then for our series we have one more coming up on march 28th so any of you who may be familiar with cedar lake history dr robert king is actually our father of cedar, cedar lake he really helped found the community um, back in the 50s and 60s and so we're going to be covering his biography in a couple of weeks here so you're all welcome to join us for that but in the meantime let's get on to our program for tonight so those of you in the audience may not realize this, but my followers at home on YouTube know that I always start my presentation by talking about my shirt. So tonight, I have on my Blue Crew shirt. This is from the Taylor Ice Truck, which all of you ladies are the amazing generous donors and sponsors, and we really, really appreciate your support. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Taylor Ice Truck and, and how you ended up contributing to that project towards the end of the talk. But that's just kind of explaining why I'm wearing what I'm wearing. I always have a little, a little story behind my t-shirt. So as I said, the star of tonight's History Roadshow is actually our very own Lassen's Resort Hotel situated on the shoreline of Cedar Lake. The Cedar Lake Historical Association has been operating this local history museum since 1986. And as you're going to learn, we're gonna talk more about the family that actually founded the resort tonight. The Indiana Histor Historical Society was blessed with a collection of photographs, about 500 photographs from the Lassen's family. We never knew these existed until 2016 when I was perusing a magazine and saw our resort in, in this, this journal, and I was shocked and thrilled and very excited. Um, found out that there are a ton of pictures of our resort that we never knew, and so you're gonna see a lot of those tonight. A lot of the pictures are from the Indiana Historical Collection, and there's also gonna be some times where I'm covering an article that they wrote about us in the Traces Magazine, which is on the screen there. That's the, one of their, um, I think it's seasonal publications, and so they covered Lessons Resort in a cover story as well one time. So I'm gonna highlight or talk about that article just a little bit. And let's begin by learning about the Lesson family. You see these pictures that are from various times in their life. I just want you to kind of know who the characters are. So Thomas Lesson Sr. is not pictured here. He is um, you know, the, the father, the patriarch of the family. He was born in 1846 in Denmark. He immigrated and settled in Chicago. And then his wife, Hannah Frederick Boyson, born in 1854, was also an immigrant from Denmark. They married in the 1870s, and they welcomed their first son, Christian Thompson Lassen, on April 30th of 1875 in Chicago. Tom was 29 at the time and employed as a carpenter contractor. Hannah was 21, and she was a housewife. They lived at 4001 South Dearborn Street, according to uh, Chris's birth certificate, which is just south of Sox Park, if, because I looked it up on Google and there's no homes there and all. So if the address is still accurate, that's approximately where it was located. So where they raised their family. Their second son, Harry, was born in 1881. Daughter, Matilda, who went by the nickname Tilly, was born in 1886. And their son, Thomas Jr., was born in 1889. So as you look on the screen there, you see Hannah on the far left. And that's a picture of her, just a photograph pose, but then also a picture of her standing on the, the porch of the house. And then in the center there, that is Tom on the left and Chris on the right. If you can see, he's got a cigar in his hand. You'll notice every time he's pictured practically, he's got a cigar in his hand. So that's Tom, which was the youngest boy, and then Chris, who was the oldest boy. And then the photograph down at, at Chris's feet is actually Chris as well, um, a, a later picture of him. Up to the top center there, kind of support to his right, are two pictures of Chris's, I believe it was his second wife. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about um, Hazel in a few minutes. And then below the two pictures of Hazel are middle son, Harry, and then his wife, Lena, and their daughter, Harriet. 
And then on the far right is Harriet as a grown woman. So that these are some of the, the family members that we're going to be talking about a little bit more tonight. So just to kind of show you who they were, what they looked like, that kind of thing. And you'll see them pop up in a couple of the other slides as well. Now, the Monon Railroad was the reason that Sea Lake really was put on the map. In 1881, the Monon came through. Um, it was a, a line that, as you can, well, it's kind of small on your screen, but it ran from Indy all the way up through Chicago, and I believe it also went down to Louisville at one point. Um, and so they had a stop along Cedar Lake, and they literally chose that site because they could establish a, a pleasure park or resort park along the shoreline as well. So the tracks literally ran along the west shore of Cedar Lake, and they had this large parcel of land where they put in all sorts of park grounds, um, different playing fields and a dance pavilion and um, uh, like a beer garden or something like that. So it was basically a way to encourage ridership from the city out and through and get people to come down to Cedar Lake and, and have summer fun and things like that. So that in 1881 is really what helps Cedar Lake in its resort years boom. And then, as you can see there on that little picture in the center and the bottom, it says, charming and picturesque summer resorts located on the Mona Route. West Bain and French Lick, which most of you have probably heard of down at the southern end of the state, which is a gorgeous, beautiful resort. But then Cedar Lake is on there, too. So our little Cedar Lake. Um, and that is a picture of the Monon Railroad Depot that was situated on the opposite shoreline from where we, our museum is. So the White House and the museum sit next to each other and if you were to look out across the shore, you would see a point that kind of juts out in a set of condos now. And that is where the Monon Railroad Depot was. And so that's the picture there that you see on the screen. So literally on the back side of that building is the lake and the train was literally just running right along the shoreline. So the Monon, like I said, is the thing that really puts Cedar Lake on the map for the resort era, and I'll talk about another way as well in a few minutes. Around 1896, that's when the Lassen family came down to Cedar Lake. Um, from what I understand, it was so that Tom could utilize his carpentry skills, and Tom and Hannah purchased 20 acres on the eastern shore. It's now known as the Cedar Lake Town Grounds. But that was just, you know, pristine open space at the time when they purchased it. So they built a home in the center of the property. So if you can see that little white dot of a house there in the middle, that's the home that they first lived in when they um, came to, to the community. And Chris was 21 years old at the time. Harry was 15. Tilly would have been 10. And Tommy would have been 7 years old. Later, they built another house, which is the bottom of the slide there, near Constitution Avenue. So kind of kind of south of where the town hall is currently situated, towards the road there, kind of if you're looking towards the, the lighthouse restaurant. So that's the picture you see at the bottom. And Thomas Lassen Sr. and Hannah lived there. And then once um, Harry met Mary Lena, they also lived there with their daughter Harriet and raised, raised her in that house. Oh, let me go back for a second and show you. So there, at the yellow star on the map of Cedar Lake is the Monon Depot. Um, just note where the red star is, because when I talk about the ice barns later on, the red star will be relevant. And then as you can see where it says Cedar Lake Historical Association, that's where we're currently situated. So that's what those little, those little markers represent. And I'll be talking about all the other buildings that you see on that aerial. They, of course, were not there in 1896 when the Lassens came to town. So after arriving in the community, Chris began a boating service with a single steamboat to ferry passengers from the depot to points all around the lake, whether it was to come to their own property and maybe camp and fish and things like that, or all the other resorts, because at one time, there were over 50 resorts in Cedar Lake. So that was really what got his personal business started. And I want you to keep that little image in mind there of that steamboat. That's going to be relevant towards the end of my talk as well. So take a good look at it and enjoy it. And then I'm going to come back to remind you about it at least uh, when, when we come back later. And then that little picture there at the bottom that says uh, Launch Line Dewey. So that one is for Bartlett Pier to Cedar Lake Station, one ride only. And it is good only for the 48 hours from the date stamped on the back. So you would get your little, your little ticket to ride the Dewey Line. And in this case, that one was sold specifically from one point to another, so your round trip ticket. And we have that in our collection at the museum, which is a really cool artifact to be able to have when you think of this is things that are over 100 years old now, much like our buildings I'm about to share with you. So, all right. So by 1904, the boating operation had grown to a fleet with six more boats, and Harry, now 23, became his brother's business partner. So that winter, a crew of carpenters built a dance hall over the frozen lake. 
the wide pure porch, which you can kind of see it there in that photograph, went all the way around the building, and that was used as a walkway as well as the boat landing. And the saloon was fronted on the south side of the pier. I'll show you some pictures, but if you look at that roof line, the roof line here to the far right of the, of the big postcard there, that would be where the saloon was located, and then the dance hall was the much bigger uh, roof right there. And let's see here. They also, also by the saloon, if you see how it's got that covered walkway between the two buildings, they were able to have tables seated under there so you could eat outside, um, get, get your food in the saloon, and then sit outside and, and eat. And this was the beginning in 1904, really, of what, what became known as Lassen's Resort with this, with this dance hall out over the lake. At about that same time, they also built an ice barn just south of the dance pavilion. You can kind of see, oh, there, I did put a side-to-side -side picture of it. So that was literally situated just to the south of the dance pavilion on the shoreline. And they would fill that ice barn up, and that's how they got their ice for an entire year. They've harvested, as you can see here, in the winter, and then store it up for the summer for all their drinks in the saloon and whatnot. And then the bottom two pictures are pictures of the Lassen's boats getting passengers at the Monon Depot as well as just pulling their boats up to the depot pier. So that's what those two bottom pictures are. And when you visit the museum, you will see this ad on the wall in our foyer. And this is from the Souvenir Album of Lake County in 1906. And I'm going to read it to you because I absolutely adore how the brothers describe their operation. So it says, have you ever had the pleasure, and again, this is from 1906, have you ever had the pleasure of attending the dances given by the Lassen brothers at their pavilion? This is a unique dance hall built for the sole purpose of catering to the fickle-minded, pleasure-seeking public and is the only one of its kind in the state. If you have been there on occasion for one of their popular dances, did it not appeal to you as being the place to spend a pleasant evening? Could one conceive of a more desirable evening's entertainment than a dance upon their fine large floor accompanied by the best of music? A promenade upon the wide verandas getting getting a beautiful view of the lake at every turn, a trip across the lake in one of the dewy launches, or to sit and listen to the splashing waves, keeping time to the music and patter of feet within. It is superb! Exclamation point. <laughs> Look about you. See how all are enjoying themselves like one great good-natured family. Not a ripple in the program to mar the evening's entertainment. This is all due to the good management, strict discipline, and congeniality of the Lassen brothers. The only restriction being placed upon their patrons is that they must sit gentlemanly and ladylike. Their motto reading, have all the fun you want, but don't get gay. If you have never been to Lassen's, you should seize the first opportunity to do so. It will be well worth your while. And while you're there, don't fail to see the renowned Dewey family. Grandpa and Grandma Dewey, Big Dewey, Little Dewey, Steamer Dewey, and Baby Dewey, all on exhibition daily at the pavilion, located 300 feet, feet west of the east shore of Cedar Lake. So to clarify, Chris named his line the Dewey Line after Admiral George Dewey, the naval hero of the Spanish-American War. He was captain of the fleet, he wore a white Commodore's hat, and like I told you, he always had a cigar in his mouth. Monon Railroad passengers were picked up from the depot on the opposite shore, and then they paid a 15 cent fare and were taken all around to any points on the lake. In August of 1906, again, I don't have a picture of Thomas Sr., but so not, not too long, about 10 years after coming to the community, um, Thomas Sr. died. So Chris pretty much became, you know, the, the patriarch of the family after that point. And our historian had discovered a cute um, article here. We did a lot of research looking at old uh, Northwest Indiana Times articles. I think it was called the Hammond Times back then. Um, it says here on June 12, 1908, that Frank Kenny and his men will go to Cedar Lake today to wire the pleasure boat of Chris Lassen. Mr. Lassen has purchased a small dynamo, and hereafter the pleasure craft will be lighted by about 25 incandescent lights. Mm -hmm. So, can you see all these things in your mind as they use all this language? It's just, I just, I'm fascinated by the history of this little, of this little, well, it was a big resort actually in the community. So here you see an ad on the left from July 3rd of 1909. So that's their 4th of July ad. Come to Cedar Lake to celebrate the 4th of July. Lassen Brothers Pavilion. Dancing July 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Boat racing July 4th and 5th. Fireworks July 4th and 5th. The prettiest place in Lake County. The biggest time in Lake County. Launches will meet you at the Railroad Depot and take you to Lassen Brothers Pavilion, the finest resort on the lake. So what you see there at the top, uh, above that ad I just read is the interior of the dance hall, and that particular picture is set up with little numbers hanging from the ceiling, so it must have been preparing for a competition of some sort, dancing competition. And then the other ad over to the right 
is from 1911. Oh, first here, let me give you a note about 1910. So we found another ad, but no, no pictures or anything, no, no, nothing decorative, which is a little ad from June 14th of 1910. The article says, Lassen's put new boat in lake. Cedar Lake season at Noda Pavilion begins this week. Chris and Harry Lassen, proprietors of Lassen's Dancing Pavilion, have purchased a new 30-foot, 10-passenger gasoline launch, which is the finest of any on the lake. The new boat, which makes six owned by the Lassen brothers, has arrived and has been placed in service. It has been christened Dewey Dandy. <laughs> the season at the pavilion will open on Wednesday night when the Crown Point Foresters will give their annual party and it is expected a large crowd will attend. The orchestra this season for the Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday night dances is the best that could be secured in Chicago and they alone are a drawing card to the pavilion. So that's, a, that's the ad from 1910, and then the, the top ad there is from 1911. So that one says, the Joy Pavilion of Lake County, Lassen's and Cedar Lake, opening season 1911, Saturday, May 13th. Our friends all over Lake County are welcomed again. Pavilion now lighted by electricity. <laughs> Come dance on the water to the music of the finest orchestra in Chicago, Lassen Brothers, Cedar Lake, Indiana, via the Monon. As the resort became popular, many from Lake County, eventually even the entire country, from what we have read, were visiting this resort. In the earliest days, of course, those who partook in the dancing pavilion would be doing um, jazz, ragtime music, things like that. Later on, of course, it would evolve to swing, big band. Um, it was noted, now I don't know what year, but our historian, our first historian, her name was Beatrice Horner, and she is the one who founded our association. She wrote an extensive collection of articles. It's a, it's a giant book really 300 pages of different articles that she wrote for local newspapers and so I'm going to be quoting her at various points as well so one of the notes in her articles was that there was a mission charge of 25 cents bands would contract for the whole season and stay in the cottages that were on the grounds and two of the best known band leaders who had happened to play there were Mickey Isley and Tommy Dorsey and when the bands took a break, this happened a little bit later on, uh, when the bands would take a break, Chris's wife Hazel would play the piano for the, for the guests. So that is what that picture is. Underneath that second ad, that is a picture of the cottages. So they were kind of nestled in between the tree line, about 100 feet in from the shoreline. So and that's a picture of the boys in the band. I know you can't see it very well on here, but they're making some interesting faces. So anyhow, the bands would come, they would stay in one particular cottage, and they would just be there for the entire summer, playing and, doing, and performing and doing, having the entertainment. Okay. Also included on the grounds, there was a duck pond, a diving platform, an orchard, uh, a string of six cottages, like I just mentioned, and those cottages were also rented out to hunters in the fall. So even though it was a summer, seasonal summer resort, the cottages at least were, were capable of being used um, throughout the fall for, for the hunters. And then back in the day, I'm sure a lot of you being local know this, Crown Point was a marriage mill, and so Cedar Lake was just by default one of the most popular um, honeymoon destinations as well. So on this next slide here, these are several pictures of Lassen's Bathing Beach, and here's a special announcement to kind of date this for you. January 24th, 1913, the uh, Hammond Lake County Times. Chris Lassen is figuring on making extensive improvements at his pleasure resort next summer, the principal feature being an up-to-date bathing beach, work on which is progressing at this time. Bathing houses will be constructed and everything about the beach and pleasure resort put up in the most modern and up-to-date shape, making it second to none in northern Indiana. So again, B. Horner shares as a manager of the resort complex, Chris operated in very strict conditions so that visitors would feel safe. One of his big restrictions was for those who wanted to use the beach. On a tree was nailed the sign, dressing not allowed in the cars, use the bathhouse. <laughs> so these bathhouses, as you can see, it's probably the bottom right corner there. They were also constructed on piers out over the water. So there's, I, I think it was one for men and one for women. I'm not, I'm not sure on that point, but there were definitely two um, that were connected off the shoreline. And then, okay, let's go back to the top left. You can see there he installed some swings out in the water, and you can see the bathhouses in the back corner of that picture, as well as like a one of these like big circles. I don't know, it looks like a giant teeter-totter in the middle of the water. Um, then the picture in the center, top center, you also see the bathhouses in the back, and those ladies are standing at the bottom of the slide. And the middle girl is um, Charlotte Whitmer, who was the niece of one of the family members. Then you see the diving platform, which I'm telling you what right now, I would not be that adventurous. You see the guy standing up on top of the platform there. And then the bottom left shows a picture of the bathhouses, 
um, from the from the water line, and if you can see on the side, there are giant steel water slide that he constructed. These are from different eras, by the way. These aren't all not from 1913, but this is the the bathing beach slide. So I threw them all in here, and then you see a picture of the of the steel slide from the shoreline. Um, with the with the patrons there, and then that little picture, the little token, is one of the little bathing beach tokens that you would probably pin to your bathing suit after you had you know, put your put your clothes in the bathhouse because you were not changing in the car, according to Mr. Lassen. So that is a um, little little bit of information about the bathing beach. Now this next slide, I'm showing you a little ad on the left there from the. 56th annual Lake County Fair official premium. So that Lake County Fair back then was held September 1st to 7th of 1914. And the ad reads, the leading amusement place in Lake County, larger than ever, Lassen Brothers Dancing Pavilion, dancing every night during the fair, fine bathing beach, Dewey Line of Boats meets all trains, lunchroom in connection, pavilion or boats can be chartered at any time during the summer season, dancing every night during the season. In the middle bottom picture, you see four little orange squares. This is also an artifact that I think we are so tremendously blessed to have in our archives at the museum. Those are little dance tickets from the pavilion. So it says on there, one dance will cost you 10 cents, or you could buy three for 25 or seven for 50 cents. And then on the right is a picture of the saloon. So I remember how I mentioned to you the saloon was constructed right along with the dance hall. Uh, there was also a barber shop. You can't see it, but that picture on the bottom uh, with the launch there, that's pulling up to the lake side. So that's like if I was at the depot and looking back at the dance hall, that's the side of the pavilion you will pull up on. And I'll have some pictures that pull apart, pull back, and you'll see that as well. The barber shop was located like right on there, which again, a dancing pavilion, a barber shop, the saloon, all these different little businesses operating out of there. I, Elmer Stilson was the name of the first barber. He had, eventually ended up moving his business over to the depot area, but, but he got his start in Cedar Lake in, inside of Lassen's Dance Pavilion. And then in the early 1900s, a man by the name of George Sherline was one of the bartenders at Lassen's Tavern, which that's the picture that you see there of the tavern. And it says, at one time, B shared tokens with lettering that said, Good for five cents at the bar, and then it had like Thomas Lassen's name as proprietor. Um, so we have one of those back at the museum as well, uh, one of the little tokens. Then that's how you would, would purchase your drinks. And a beer costs 10 cents, and mixed drinks were 25 cents. Again, I'm not sure what era B is noting that was on prices from, but at the same time, I would love to be able to purchase 25 cent <laughs> mixed drinks nowadays. Then, September 19th, 1914, end of the season, okay, end of the season in 1914, we read in the newspaper that business at Seal Lake has begun to slow down after one of the most successful seasons ever known at the summer resort. Many improvements are going to be made during the dull season this fall and winter upon the hotels and pleasure places around the lake, particularly at the Lassen Brothers Pavilion, where it is said that dining rooms and lunch counters will be added to the present pavilion to care for the crowds expected next summer. So as I mentioned, the saloon was already in place for several years, but the Lassons were now adding on a dining room where fish and chicken dinners were going to become the specialty. And that's really what was going on in a lot of the resorts in Cedar Lake in that era. Chicken dinners were especially big at the Binion's um, restaurant, which you might have heard of that one as well, which did have a connection to the Binion's restaurant in Chicago. Um, the Schnurlein family, the, remember the bartender or yeah, tavern operator. Schnurlein family of Crown Point hauled farm produce daily to the resort. Other sources of produce came from other local farmers. Fresh bread, biscuits, and pastries were also included, included in the restaurant menu. And according to a woman by the name of Lucille Gard Sheik, she says, only the more affluent could afford the chicken dinners that Lessons advertised. So it's fortunate that there was a lunchroom that provided sandwiches and ice cream as well. So on the slides here in the top left, you see a picture, almost if you were to come down present day Constitution Avenue, that's kind of the view of the resort that you would see. And the sign there on the left that says buffet, that's actually the entrance to the saloon. And then the building off towards the back, that's not the dance hall, that is the restaurant they built adjacent to the dance hall. So also on piers, out over the water, but connected to the dance hall on the back side, the non the non lake view side, and then that's the interior of the of the restaurant there. And then the other picture at the bottom left is an opposite angle. If you were standing over where the bathing beach was, that's the side of the restaurant, and then you can see the dance pavilions to the right with the little porch uh, roof there. So that and that's also the entrance to where the lunch counter was, because that little sign there says um, lunch lunch counter and ice cream shop or something like that. 
So that is where we had our fish and chicken dinners. So now we gotta back up for just a second. We gotta talk about Armour Town. That was that red star that I was telling you about up on the opposite northern part of the shoreline. So back in the 1890s, at about the same time that the Lassens had come to Cedar Lake, Philip and Jonathan Armour established ice interests at the northwestern shore of the lake. These are the meat packers, Armour meat packing out of the south side of Chicago. They had local carpenters Nicholas Mogger, Charles Wheeler, and Kinsey Witter build a large boarding house to house workers who harvested ice for their meat packing business. The Armour Hotel was part of a complex of their ice barns, 25 outdoor privies, library barn, and special railroad spur to service the big ice industries of that era. In 1919, the ice industries moved and merged with the ice business being conducted at the southwestern shores of the lake. So at that time, Chris Lassen purchased the abandoned Armour Hotel that once housed the ice labor force brought via the Monon Railroad to the Cedar Lake Shores. And that would be about a six to eight week season in the dead of winter when these gentlemen would be brought out from Chicago to work and harvest ice off of the lake. And a lot of times the story goes is they were gentlemen from Skid Row and so they weren't the best behaved men and they would come and they would work and they'd get their money and then they'd go to one of the local bars and get in fights and start all over again the next week. So anyhow, the Armour Hotel was moved um, like I said, Chris bought the, bought the hotel, gutted it, and then moved the hotel with a crew of carpenters under the supervision of Nicholas Mager. So they put it on sleds and took the structure across the frozen lake in the winter of 1919. And it was successfully moved from the west to east across the wide area of the lake and set up on his property, you know, back where, where I've been showing you all these aerials of, behind, I'll show you another picture in a second here, of where it was located. And there's a couple of versions of how this went down. So again, no matter what, yes, it was put on these wooden sleds, but there are variations to how it was pulled. One story says that a team of horses pulled the building, but the more common one is that a Pierce Arrow and a Republic truck pulled the building across. And the, the MO was, if she starts to go under, just get off. Just abandon ship and get off and let her go under the ice if that ends up happening. But, of course, that didn't happen. She arrived safely to be set up inland approximately 150 feet from the shoreline. And that's her present site today. Um, it's a T-shaped two-story structure. And I think I'll have another arrow later show you how that shape um, is set up. But what Chris and his brothers, Harry and Tom, ended up doing then was going back to the other side of the shore and dismantling the armor ice barn. So that's what you see the left side of the picture there. So you see how there's the ice elevator with the ice pieces going up. The barn on the left side was Armour's ice barn. So that's what Chris and, and, and um, his brothers were able to dismantle, brought that across the lake. Some of they floated across, other pieces they drove around um, to the other side, and they used that to build the, the front side of the T. So that's the side that if you come visit now is the, the porch side of the, of the building. And then if you go down in the basement, you will see how they reused a lot of the lumber. There's a bunch of notches and various uh, timbers that has no business being there, but that's because they were reusing the lumber from the ice barn. So it's, it's a really interesting story how um, you just, you didn't tear anything down back then, right? You figured how to reuse it and recycle it. And, and our building is a testament to that story. So it became, Oh, let me explain to you here in Armour Town. So if you're familiar with Cedar Lake, north side, I was showing where that red star was. That is what that picture is up in the upper right corner. And you can see the blue rectangles are the two ice bars um, that you see in the photograph. The little, I don't know what color that is, orange or pink, there's the little, little building right behind the one ice bar. That is the resort hotel, the, the Armour Hotel. And so they, they dismantled that in, into pieces and brought it over. So that was... That, that, that sketch is overlaid across a current picture of the shoreline to approximate and show you where that is. And if you're ever in Cedar Lake and you're standing on my porch, you need to look across to where the water tower is, and that's the, the part of the shoreline where this building came from. So here we have some pictures from grand opening weekend, um, May 7th of 1921. That's the ad you see there. East side, Cedar Lake, new modern hotel, 74 rooms, chicken, fish, and steak dinners. And the Ted Lewis Orchestra from Chicago will be there. And there's a picture of, I think it's Grandma Lassen in the center there, Hannah, but I'm not positive. But that, that um, flag on the back of the car, there's this dying and dance at Lassen's Resort, New Modern Hotel. And then 
you can't read what's behind the ladies. But anyway, that is that is a picture from opening weekend. And then there's another picture on the right of the hotel. And it's pretty much identical to what you will find today uh, when you come out there. That is, that is exactly what you're going to see. So here's a little ad from, let's see, looks like the... This is actually May 7th newspaper. A goodly number of Crown Pointers are at Cedar Lake tonight attending the grand opening of the new 70-room Lassen Hotel and Dancing Pavilion. Sure enough, the May 9th edition reported the opening of the Lassen Dancing Pavilion on Saturday night was the most successful event ever held at that popular resort. Parties from Chicago, Hammond, Gary, Chicago Heights, Crown Point, and other points dancing to the music of the Ted Lewis Orchestra of Chicago. The new modern 70-room hotel was inspected and reservations made by many for summer outings. A record-breaking year is looked for at the Lake of the Red Cedars. Now, these pictures here are the only pictures that I know of in existence of the interior of the hotel. These were just found in 2016, which again is shocking to me that they didn't find their way home to us, but perhaps whoever donated them to IHS didn't realize that, um, that we were there, that we were preserving their family legacy. So fortunately, we at least are able to get some electronic copies of these pictures, and we know what the building looks like. And I'll tell you what, right now, when you come into the museum, you're going to see a lot of the same things. That fireplace is still there. Those sconces are still on the fireplace. The chandelier that was hanging that I have had a love-hate relationship with for years, I think is the original chandelier, so now I've got to leave it. Um, and then you can see there the front desk and uh, the staircase, everything is original position. The only room that's not anymore, oh, by the way, that is Helen Lassen sitting in the chair there um, next to the fireplace. The only thing that's not in intact anymore is that um, lounge there that you see in the bottom photo. So what the way the, the building was structured, you walk into the front door and to your left and your right, there were lounges on either side. One was for the men and one was for the women. I'm guessing that's the women's lounge based on the... I don't know, the doily on there and the piano, it just seems to be a little more of a feminine space. I have no clue. Um, now it is our cafe. We took down some walls in between a couple of rooms, and that's the room when you go in now that we call the cafe, and you'll see there's a remnant of the back bar from the Coleman's Hotel. And so when you come into the museum, you'll know that, and I have that picture actually hanging in the hallway too, so you can see. Um, but I just love it because I can say, oh, original trim is still intact. And we don't, we don't have the carpets anymore, of course, but the stain, the sun stain is on the floor, so you can even see where the carpets used to be placed. Um, so we're really, really proud of that fact, that it's, it's still intact. And, and you still feel, Jen can attest to this, you still feel like you're walking back in time when you come into the building. And that's the name of the game for us, is preserve and restore. So that's the last room of hotel. Again, there are so many different versions of how many rooms were in this building. And I'll tell you what, unless you're counting bathrooms and closets, I have no clue how you're getting 70 or even 65. I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. But I have to stick with the story that they kept advertising. So the two-story hotel consisted of 65 rooms, the lobby, the registration desk, the lounges, um, of course, where the men were able to smoke their cigars and cigarettes and pipes. Um, one of the lounges had slot machines. We'll come back to that in a second. One feature of the hotel that could not easily miss would be, of course, the large wraparound porch out front and the rocking chairs. And here's a really neat fact. So we had um, one of our early historians interviewed Charlotte Whitmer, who was the niece of Hazel, and she ended up interviewing her and learned that the lobby had wicker furniture and a chandelier and sconce lighting, and wouldn't you know it, in 2016, because this interview was done way a long time ago, 2016 when we get these pictures, we realize that is indeed how it was decorated. So again, very fortunate to know that, that enough of it is still intact and you will be able to have that experience when you come out to the museum now. The hotel rooms had very simply simple furnishings, dressers, and beds, and carpets. Some of the rooms shared a bathroom. Those were the premium rooms. Others just had a washstand and a basement basin, and then you would go in down the hallway to use the bathroom. So, July 18th, 1921. All right, hold on with those, um, those um, slot machines. Just a couple of months later, we learned that slot machine keepers are to be heavily fined. Four places of business were fined $50 a day of keeping slot machines in their place of business and were fined $50 a piece and sentenced to 60 days in jail. But the jail sentence was suspended. The defendants were George Hensler, R.B. Russell, John Kennedy, and Melly Leathers, all resort operators in Cedar Lake. Harry and Chris Lassen, also accused of keeping slot machines, refused to plead guilty and will be tried tomorrow afternoon at 2.30. So... Good luck with that, boys. Um, I don't know how that particular um, trial went, 
But I do have an article from May 13th of 1923. They didn't get so lucky. Harry Lassen, uh, Lassen brothers are found guilty by jury in late criminal court. Harry Lassen and his brother Christian, proprietors of the Lassen Dance Hall and Hotel at Cedar Lake, were found guilty of maintaining a gambling device by a jury in late criminal court at Crown Point last night, and each fined $50 in costs amounting to approximately $134. The case went to the jury at 11.45 yesterday morning, and the verdict was returned seven hours later. <laughs> the Lassens were charged with permitting a slot machine to be placed in their resort and allowing it to be operated. Isn't that that, that twist of words there? Um, as its chief witnesses, the state introduced former county treasurer Ralph Bradford and county recorder William C. Rose, both of whom testified that they had operated a slot machine in the Lassen Hotel. The defendants were indicted by the Lake County Grand Jury at one of the first sessions held by it this year. So, it's a fact. It's a fact that we have no slot machines now, but, um, but the boys did. As the resort became better known, more features were added. Around 1925, Chris added a garage to provide car and boat repair because you weren't necessarily coming down on the train as much anymore. Automobiles were more popular. And then they also had a, um, let's see here in the picture if you can tell. All right, hopefully you can kind of make out what I'm going to describe to you. So you see the bathhouses, right? The little uh, U-shaped set of bathhouses. You see the dance pavilion and the restaurant and the saloon out all on piers over the water. Then um, just to the, I don't know how to show you, but the ice house. Um, let me just show you. Okay, this will just be easier. So here's the ice house that I was telling you about. This is actually, a, those of you who know Tobes Restaurant in Cedar Lake, it was the Teapot Dome, that was Tobes. So that's where Lighthouse Restaurant sits now. So then right here behind this tree line is where they put in that garage. That is now the current town hall and police station. And then over here in the tree line is where the um, home that I was telling you the Lassons lived. And then the museum would be, oh, the hotel, um, would be back up here on the shoreline. Um, right back here. So this picture was an aerial shot taken in 1927 by someone named Uncle Glenn. Um, and then this picture over here, which I'll talk about in a second, shows the um, miniature golf course that they ended up putting in on the grounds. So on April 5th, 1926, Chris, I do not know the information about his first marriage, but as I had showed you the pictures, he may also married Hazel Ake. Um, that was his second wife. So Chris is now age 51, though, on April, 20, April 5th, 1926. Hazel was born August 18th, 1887, making her 39 at the time of her marriage to Chris. Uh, she was born in St. Joseph County to Frank Ake and Nancy Laring. So Chris and Hazel then were jointly managing the resort. I don't know how they met. I don't know the backstory, but that's kind of one of the things that after preparing for today, I'm like all about the genealogy. You know, I want to know more about the family and how it all came to be. So during the spring when the resort was prepared for each summer, Chris and Hazel lived in a few rooms at the end of the east hallway of the hotel. There was a steam plant in the basement that provided heat. And then they also lived in these rooms each summer. The hotel, according to, to our historian who had interviewed um, the niece, um, they didn't have room service. So if someone wanted a cup of coffee, they had to go out to the restaurant. During each summer, almost all of the hotel rooms were constantly full. There were many regular repeat visitors throughout the years of the resort, many book rooms by the week and even by the season. According to uh, Charlotte Wimmer, again, niece of Hazel, famous heavyweight boxer Jack Johnson and Olympic swimmer, swimmer Johnny Weissmuller stayed at the hotel. During each season, Chris's wife Hazel and three other girls would work in the hotel. Hazel stayed in one of the rooms in the east wing closest to the front desk in case someone would come in during the middle of the night. And then I know I cannot substantiate this claim, but there was a, uh, there's a gentleman who lives in Cedar Lake, and I believe it was his mother and father who worked at the resort, and they said that they, they um, waited on the gangster, and I just drew a blank on his name, Capone. So, you know, everyone talks about Capone having all sorts of, you know, places throughout Lake County and things like that. So, supposedly Cedar Lake was one of the places he visited. I have nothing that I can substantiate that claim with. Um, and then, like I said, by the 1930s, that miniature golf course had been added. It was called the Pee Wee Course, and I believe it was 18 holes. And before that, that area was actually a grazing spot for the cows that provided milk for the restaurant. So here's a picture of a 1935 Lassen's Resort brochure, and I'll, I'll read that for you so that you can hear some of the ways that they described it and things like that. So it says, Lassen's Hotel, Cedar Lake, Indiana, and the phone numbers, you know, 2461-3931-3081. Um, fishing, boating, golfing, dancing, swimming, restaurant, and ballroom. Dining room, dance pavilion, and tavern built over the lake. Speedboat and launch rides. Excellent food, steak, chicken, 
fish, and special plate dinners at popular prices, dancing every Saturday, wrestling and boxing on Monday nights, which I'll explain more in a minute, tavern equipped with a horseshoe bar, cottages on Lakeshore for rent, 18 holes sporty golf course nearby, which so I don't think that one was his, his golf course, and then special rates for parties. So the hotel rates, if you wanted a room with a bath per day, a single was $2, uh, per day double was $3.50, Per day single without bath, $1.25 and $1.50. Um, per day double, two, $2.50 and $3. Room and board with bath per week single was $21. Uh, double per week was $40 with a bath. Without a bath, you could get a single room for $18 and a double for $32. Room without bath per week, European single. So I don't know if that just means me that sink in the room. I'm not sure. $7. Does anyone know what that would mean, European? I will allow the audience participation at this point if anyone knows how to define that. I have to look into that. I'm just, I'm just realizing I didn't research that before I came here. And then room without bath per week, double $9, um, and then 12 and 20. So I am not sure, just, I have no clue what that means. Maybe you had to take a bath in the lake. I don't know. Modern, attractive hotel. So it says, Lassen's Hotel and Resort on beautiful Cedar Lake, Indiana, only 30 miles from Chicago City the Lips. Why go farther? Served by Monon Railroad and Greyhound bus lines. And then they show that map that is really shrunken up to show you how close you are to Chicago um, with Cedar Lake there. So clean, cool hotel, excellent food, boating, bathing, and fishing. So that again is a 1935 brochure um, from the resort. Now the Great Depression made the resort survival difficult, as you can imagine, and in an effort to attract visitors with sporting events. Boxing and wrestling matches were held in the dance hall or in the garage, because by that point the garage really wasn't being used anymore. So October 1935, there was a, an article that talked about a thousand spectators packed the former garage, which knowing the size of that building, I can't envision that, but um, different fire codes, I guess, to see eight bouts, two juvenile events, and a battle royale to close the show. Unfortunately, on November 5th, so just a few weeks later, Harry Lassen died very, very suddenly. Um, he was stopping for a moment to rest as he helped with the decoration of his dance hall for the boxing bouts which were to have been held there tonight. Harry Lassen, age 54, one of the proprietors of the famous Lassen Lake Resort, fell from his chair dead at 2.20 o'clock this afternoon. Lassen and others were fixing up the hall for the entertainment, which was to be put on tonight by the Cedar Lake Commercial Club. He remarked about feeling tired and sat down on a bench. The others went ahead with their work until he suddenly pitched to the floor. Death is believed to have been caused by a heart attack. Because of his death, the commercial club entertainment has been postponed indefinitely. Lassen is survived by his widow, a daughter, Mrs. Victor Fleming of Chicago, his aged mother who lived with him, and two brothers, Representative Chris Lassen of this place, and Tommy Lassen, a guard at the Michigan City Prison. And he also, I don't know, this particular obit didn't have his sister Tilly Larson, but she was still um, alive as well. The body was removed to Crown Point, but no funeral arrangements have been made. So that really um, took, Chris took a hit from losing his brother, losing his business partner. So by the next spring, he actually ended up putting the resort up for sale. So in 1936, I have a, a portfolio here of how they were listing um, the resort. So it says, Lassen's Resort is the largest and best known on Cedar Lake. It is situated on the east side of the lake, about 12 miles south of Crown Point, four miles north of Lowell, and 60 miles south of Chicago. U.S. Highway 41 is only a short distance from the west side of Cedar Lake, and all roads leading to the resort are paved with concrete. Chris and Harry Lassen have operated this resort for years and have done a very wonderful business. It is clear of all encumbrances. Two years ago, they refused $125,000 cash for the property. The various buildings and equipment could not be replaced for that amount. As a matter of fact, the investment made by the Lassen brothers in land, buildings, and equipment is in excess of $200,000. Harry Lassen died very suddenly on November 5th last, and in order to close the estate, Chris Lassen has asked us to find a buyer for it. We cannot speak too highly of this property. It has received the best of care, and all of the buildings and equipment are in the first class condition. It is not a ritzy resort, but appeals to the summer tourists and vacationists who looks for a popular, respectable, up-to-date place to spend a weekend, a few days, or his entire vacation. The lake is well stocked with bass, bluegills, and crappies. There is excellent boating and bathing also. As we see it, this is a wonderful opportunity for a syndicate or corporation operating hotels and resorts to secure a real, re a real revenue producer. 
Business has reached a peak of $85,000 per season and has never been less than $50,000 even during the depression year. It has never been promoted. Business has come to it just like Topsy grew. With the proper promotion methods, it would be a bonanza. Please bear in mind that Lassen's Resort is well known in this part of the country. It enjoys a good reputation. It has operated continuously for many years and is a going proposition. Should the purchaser so desire, Mr. Lassen would be happy to lend whatever assistance is required in preparation for the 1936 season, as well as donate his services for the entire season without any cost to the purchaser. On the following pages are photographs of the various units, and they will give you a comprehensive idea of the physical property and will serve to establish the fact that it will prove to be a sound investment. So they go on. Let me, let me at first tell you these, um, these pictures here. So this will not be easily accomplished except by pointing. This here is Chris, and then this one is Harry, and this one's Tom. We call Tom crazy here. Um, Grandma here, Hannah Lesson, and then I believe this is Lena, Harry's wife. This is their daughter, Harriet, and I think that this is Helen that we saw sitting in the lobby, which we think Helen is Tom's wife. That's a piece of the genealogy I haven't been able to do yet. And then um, this is a picture of Harry and Lena out on the ice where they're doing the ice harvesting. Here's the, the ice barn in the background. And then this is a picture of them as well standing right on the edge by the um, saloon entrance. So that's who you see here. And then of course all the resort staff, which I do not have the names of all those people. And now here's a couple of pictures describing um, the property as it was in the, in for, for sale here. So on the extreme left, well, it's the right here for you, but this photograph they were showing is the 60-car garage building, which is kind of hard to see. Let me, let me point this out. So the garage building is right here. That's now the current town hall and police station. Here would be the house that they lived in when they had first moved to the property. Here's the bigger house that they built. Here's the T-shaped hotel. Here are the cottages, and then of course the bathhouse would be right here. This is the backside, of course, of the restaurant, and then the dance pavilion. And the ice house is right here, and then that Tobes restaurant I was telling you about is kind of right in that area there. So that's kind of looking from the, from the street view. And then this is a picture showcasing from the hotel, basically, looking back out. So here was the duck pond right in here. There was a pier that went out this way and another pier right here by the saloon that you could walk on the other side. And then in the middle they called that the duck pond and they said that was entertainment for all people of all ages. Um, here are the bathhouses right there and obviously all the cars parking right up against the shore which we don't do anymore. Let's see if I have any more details there on any of that. The orchard was kind of, eh, it's, it's, it's off that, that arrow shot. You can't really see orchard from that view. I already talked to you about the hotel. And then furnished cottages for employees. We just talked about those. And then the pavilion here. So now we're on the lakeside looking at the pavilion. They said the dining room accommodates too much. So the dining room is right here, this little sliver of roof line. So it's behind the dance the dining room accommodated 250 people, and the dance floor is large enough for 500 couples to dance at one time, which again blows my mind. A building that big built on piers out over the water, I cannot even fathom it. Here's the ice, ice house right here. Here's where the launches would come up from the depot back over here and pull up along the shore. That's where that little barber shop was located at one point. Here's a back picture of the, this is an earlier photograph than they painted here on the back of the ice barn. So you would see the advertisement from the lakeside and then one of the, one of the employees there working on one of the cars. And like I had told you about the duck pond, he says, which is a source of never, never ending amusement for children as well as grown ups. And then a large veranda that wrapped around the entire building. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. The bathing beach, they said that that represented an investment of $2,000, that toboggan, and being a constructed entirely of steel. And talked about the ice house, which had the capacity to um, hold an entire season's supply of ice. The garage building, substantially constructed of brick, a capacity for 60 cars, situated at the south entrance, and then a comfortable 10-room family home which is where they had made their home. Okay, so the property did not sell. 
So you see here the ad for grand opening Lassen Hotel Summer Resort in 1937. And then May 8th, um, sorry, it was on May 8th, to the music of Jimmy Reynolds Orchestra. Now also in 1937, they brought in professional football player and wrestler Ambrose Rasher. He was from the village of Fosville, which is out south of Brunswick, if you're familiar with the Calumet, I think it comes down and dead ends over there at Classville. So he was approached to head an athletic commission to organize bouts to be held in the garage. So we had talked about that with the wrestling matches. And then with the advent of World War II, the matches were, were discontinued, just weren't popular. Uh, the October 15th, 1944 edition of the Hammond Times is when we finally announced the sale of the resort property. So let's see, Chris... The, the widely known Lassa Resort at Cedar Lake, when the Lake Region Christian Conference, composed of the Churches of Christ of this region, took possession of the property, which was purchased several months ago. The church conference will use the resort for holding their annual conference as well as conducting religious school there during the summer months. The hotel containing seven rooms will be used to house those attending the conference and school. Many improvements are planned before the opening of the 1945 season. Chris will uh, started started the operation 48 years ago and is looking forward to retirement at the age of 70. And he, as I told you a second ago, the property is valued at over $200,000. However, he did not want it to be subdivided and he expressed his desire you know, to retire, travel, I want to go, I want to be done. So he show, he sold to the churches for $55,000, one, one quarter of the, of, of the value of the property. And then you can see a picture there. He's building his boat to then go down and retire to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. From what I understand, it took about five years before, before he and his wife got down to Florida. So they had their farewell party in October 1944. And the other picture there on the side, which I'm assuming is taken towards the end of the resort days as well. So here's Hazel and Chris, and this is Lena, and then we do not know these, like, who these two people are. Um, he was a he was a meat packer from Chicago, and I believe that was his wife. It said that her name was like it listed something in a question mark, and then oh, I forgot the dog's name. But the dog's name is even listed on the back of the photograph. So I forgot to write that down. My apologies. So those were the final years at Lassen's Resort. Let's see here. Mrs. Lassen ended up dying in 1945, so October, just one year after, after that. Um, Hannah Lassen, her grandma, um, 91, died Monday night in the Chicago home of her daughter, Mrs. W.G. Larson, and son Thomas. A resident of Cedar Lake for 56 years, she was known as Grandma Lassen to all. The mother of former state rep, Chris Lassen, um, lived at the resort her, her entire life with a ready smile and cheerful words. She attended all social functions at Cedar Lake. So, so Grandma just made it one year past. And then, like I said, Chris retired to Florida, and he only ended up making it until 1955. He, he had five years of retirement down in Florida, and he, too, had a heart attack. Um, he was 80 years old at the time, and... Surviving are his wife Hazel, so Hazel outlived him, and brother Thomas, who lives at Rogers Park, Illinois. No mention of Tilly, so I have to go back and figure out what happened to, to Sister Tilly. This is a picture here from the Lake Region Christian Assembly Archive, so that's showing evening devotions and friendship circle. They're standing on the lawn in front of the resort hotel, which they end up dubbing Hotel Christian. So it's really cool because we have a lot of people who end up coming back nowadays. And, this was the room that I slept in, and, and here's where I tried to sneak to see. Girls were upstairs, boys were downstairs, and, and I tried to sneak up or down, and there was a big lady always standing at the top of the stairs, and get back downstairs, you, boy, you know, that kind of, so they'd come and they'll share those stories and stuff. It's really, really special to know that they can still revisit the space. We're really happy to be preserving their memories, too, even if it's not quite the same of the way that they would remember, because we're trying to preserve it back to Lassen's days. The buildings still hold the same memories for them. Let's see. Over the years that LRC had the property, the buildings continued to deteriorate. I believe that the dance hall collapsed. Then they retained the um, restaurant and still use that for, for dining. Um, but by the time that they were finished with the property in 1976 and the town of Cedar Lake bought it, all those different structures came down. The um, hotel was in such poor shape that they were going to tear it down. But 
A concerned group of 19 citizens who saw the historical significance of the building established the Cedar Lake Historical Association in 1977. And two years later, they negotiated a lease with the town so that we could start the museum operations. By 1980, they got it on the Indiana Register of Historic Sites as well as the state registry, or sorry, state registry and federal registry. And on October 18th, 1986, 42 years after Chris had celebrated nearly to the day his farewell event at the resort, the local history museum ended up opening. So now fast forward, this is where you all come into the story, fast forward uh, to 2019 and 2020 when our affiliation with your incredible organization began. Your gifts have helped us develop some amazing programs and we are so thankful to, to Tri-Kappa, not the least of which is the Taylor Ice Truck. She's our new baby. I love that hotel with a passion, but I love this little girl too. Um, this, I don't, did anyone, did you share the video, Jen, the dedication video? It is recorded. There's about a 10 minute video clip of the day that we had the dedication of the ice truck. And so you can see that if you would like on our YouTube page. I just, um, I didn't visit her, but my, my mechanic was out there this morning taking out her gas tank because she needs to be repaired and taking the doors off. We've got to take them down to the repair shop as well to get some new windows put in. So your support is helping to get these things done so that she can start rolling out as our, um, our, our mobile ambassador this year. Um, so again, check our Facebook page or the YouTube page that we have there's a little nine minute ten minute video clip that will will show you the dedication um, ceremony which was just so cool because uh, Todd Taylor did not know that we kind of had this 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 ceremony plan it was really special to be able to share that with him so she's gonna be mobile literally as soon as your gas tank gets put back in and your doors are back on uh, this spring so if you guys ever have an event and you would like the Taylor ice truck to make a visit Please let me know and I will do everything that I can to get her brought to wherever you may be. Just keep it local. She can drive, but we just don't want to push the limits, right? She's like 70 some years old, so let's be gentle. Um, and you can continue to support her. Jen is sporting our lovely uh, Taylor Ice Crew t-shirts here. So if you'd like one of those, I'd be more than happy to take an order for you. And you can support support the museum as well. Um, we, have, we have a poster painting of the Lassen's Dance Pavilion. So if you would like one of those, those are available on our website too. But wait, my friends, but just wait, there's more. The fun is only just beginning. Our association has, has spent the past 35 years serving as caretakers of the historic <laughs> hotel, presenting the relevance of Cedar Lake history. So on May 7th of 1921, that was when the, the hotel opened, May 7th of 2021, we are having an enormous party. Come COVID or high water, we're having a party. You can hang out on the lawn if you need to. Um, but we're going to bring in that second century uh, for Lassen's, Lassen's Hotel history. And we would love to have you all there to see the new exhibits that we have been received uh, grant funding for and to experience the hotel in all of her splendor. But that's not all. That is not all, my friends. Remember I told you to keep that boat in mind? At the beginning of the slideshow, here's why. A hundred anniversary certainly deserves to be celebrated in multiple ways, and we are doing just that. We are so excited to share that we have partnered with the Heston Steam Museum in LaPorte, Indiana, for a one-of-a-kind experience called Steam Through History in Cedar Lake, July 26th through the 30th this year. The Heston Steam Museum is going to bring a vintage 1910 steamboat to our museum. So tours aboard the 20 passenger vessel are going to focus on local history as well as the science behind steam power and give people a way to get out on the water because the town of Cedar Lake looks much different from the water and we want to give you that experience. This is this event is fully supported by the Indiana Humanities. We received a collaboration grant. Legacy Foundation, we received a Transform Lake County grant. The Indiana Historical Society provided us with a Heritage Support Project grant, made possible by Lilly Endowment. And the Town of Cedar Lake gave us tourism funds. So this is the first collaboration we have ever done, the largest event we have ever tried to pull off. If any of you are itching to get some volunteer hours in, I have a place for you this summer. Please uh, see me or see Jen and we'll let you know how to get involved. But in addition to the steamboat rides, we're going to have, as you can see on the screen there, we're gonna have all sorts of programming, um, not the least of which is an augmented reality experience. So you will be able to download an app to your phone and pan it across a couple of points on the shoreline and see the Monon Railroad Depot in the site where it would have been and Lassen's Resort with the Dance Pavilion, things like that, um, as they would have presented um, in, in the historic times. 
So the boat, the Alabama number four, is nearly identical to Dewey's Lassen steamboat. So exciting. She's darling. I have another favorite thing, right? <laughs> um, very, very cute. And it, you, it actually got its start on the Great Lakes. It was a lifeboat on the Alabama steamer ship that ran on the Chicago, Grand Haven, and Muskegon route. And that was starting in 1910. And so this boat was then purchased and refurbished by James Kincaid of Elkhart, Indiana, and fitted with a single cylinder steam engine. So she has a whole brand new life as a steamboat now. Um, and as our, as our partner in crime, Ted Reed, over at the Hessen Steam Museum, he likes to say, steam power is not without its trials and tribulations. It is not like just turning the key of the pontoon and taking off. So the boat is historic, and she takes a little bit more work than a modern piece of machinery. So we're working diligently together to make sure that, um, that she can come to Cedar Lake. It's not 100% guaranteed because we've got to work with DNR still. So we have to go through that process, but we are working right now with them. As soon as it's approved, it will be the only steamboat passenger for hire vessel in the entire state of Indiana. That's why this is taking longer than we anticipated. There are no other steamboats in operation in the state of Indiana. If you see one, it's a diesel. It's not legit. It's not real. It's fake. This is the only steamboat that will be in operation in our state. So we don't expect to run into any snafus, but hey, we'll take some extra prayers and good wishes that it, it all comes to fruition so that in July we can bring the steamboat for you to experience.